Julie Herman of Jaber Quilts and Lazy Girl Designs, and welcome to the Great Gift Sew Along. We wanted to get crafty with you as the holiday season approaches, so I've put together the best of our best patterns for you to make handcrafted gifts for your loved ones with ease and joy. We'll be making Perfect Pouches by Lazy Girl Designs, Rock Candy Table Topper by Jaybird Quilts, Sweepy Paws by Lazy Girl Designs, and finishing up with Candy Dish Pillows by Jaybird Quilts. Welcome back to the Rock Candy Table Topper. Today I'm going to show you how to cut and make bias binding with stripes. Let's get started. Binding. I love a good stripe, especially when cut on the bias with binding. There's a couple different ways to do this. You can cut a square and do continuous bias binding, but I find the best luck with matching up my strips with cutting individual strips and then piecing them. So that's what I'm gonna show you here today. So I have a yard of fabric here. It's more than I need. Um, I don't mind cutting extra and I like having lots of long strips and not using the tiny ones. So I'm gonna cut the entire yard. So what I'm gonna do, and I feel like I should tell you, this is real life, <laughs> I'm a cuticle issue. I did not cut myself with a rotary cutter. Didn't do that. I would admit it if I did, but I didn't I have a cuticle issue. So band-aids and all, real life today. So hop back on in. What I am going to do is I am taking the cut edge and lining it up with one of the selvage edges. And so this is gonna create a big triangle, bigger than what you can see at the moment. And I do have photos of this um, on my blog. I have previously done this in photos. I just haven't recorded it. And so I wanted to record it today um, to give you another perspective on how to do this. So once you have that, and this does not need to be all the way over to the edge, it just needs to be lined up at a 90. So by having it on this strip, I know that I'm good to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my straight ruler and line it up so that it is square, 90 degrees up here, and cut. Now I have a bigger piece to my left here and a smaller piece to my right. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cut, I prefer two and a quarter inch, you may prefer two and a half or something else, you can do whatever it is that you prefer. I like two and a quarter. Generally, I rate my patterns for two and a quarter, but I um, account for two and a half in the fabric requirements so that if you prefer two and a half, you should have enough fabric to go ahead and do that. So looks like I might need to change my blade soon. So I'm just simply going to cut two and a quarter inch strips. And like I said, I started with a yard, and since I started with a yard, I don't have to go all the way to the point here. So I'm going to stop pretty soon because I don't like to have more seams in my binding than necessary. Um, just more bumps to have to sew over, especially when you're doing the hand sewing at the end. So I think I'll cut one more and then I will toss this piece into my scrap bin because it's still a good chunk of fabric, just not fabric that I want to use for binding. So I'm going to stick that over the side. I'm going to take my strips, put them out of the way and I am going to flip this around. So I'm right-handed, if you're left-handed, this will all be backwards, but I'm gonna go ahead and fold up. So this was down here, and since this is an extra big piece, it's bigger than the length of my ruler. So I'm gonna fold that up, and then I'm gonna rotate this around. I'm gonna take my ruler, and I'm going to do the same two and a quarter down this entire piece. And now I am getting to a small part again. So I'm probably just gonna cut one more piece. I definitely will have enough. The next step is to take all of these pieces and sew them together into one long piece. And I'm going to head on over to the machine and bring you along with to show you what I do to get these to line up perfectly. When piecing binding strips together that are non-directional or not stripes, the standard practice is fold them over like this, sew, and piece them all. But with something like this, you really want the stripes to line up because otherwise your eye is really gonna pick up on it in the quilt. Now I used to do it like this 
and I would get things pretty well lined up and I would go and I had pretty good success. But then Tula Pink showed a different way and I have found a lot of success with what she did. So I'm going to share what she did. So what Tula does is she, instead of focusing on the side that might get cut like this, she focuses on the side that has the stripe. And instead of trying to line it up and hope that you get lucky by sewing exactly on the line, she suggests shifting it like this and sewing right in the middle. Now I loaded my machine with black thread and I am going to always sew in the black. And that way hopefully the thread will disappear and all the stripes will line up perfectly. So I'm gonna start on my little leader ender. I always start on that, it saves me from getting thread nests. And I'm just gonna line these up. I don't have my quarter inch foot on right now, I just have a standard machine foot because I'm not sewing a quarter inch. And I'm just gonna piece those two together. And I'm gonna repeat that process with all of my strips of varying lengths. Doesn't matter to me the order that I piece them um, because hopefully you're not gonna see all these seams. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do another one and then I'll take that first one off to show you how it looks. And there we go. In a finished quilt, you are not going to notice that slight shadow that it creates. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a regular pair of scissors, not my little snips, and trim off this, and trim off this, and here. And then I will go ahead and press the seam open. I like to press my binding seams open. I like to press almost every seam open, but especially binding because I find if you press binding to one side, it really creates a lot of bulk in your finished quilt. So I'm going to continue this process, sewing all of my pieces together in the black section, and then I can go ahead and put my binding on my quilt. Thank you for tuning in today. If this video was helpful for you, please like it, share your comments with us, and click here to subscribe to this channel. Here are links to the other great gift sew along videos and some of my other videos you might like. Sign up to receive the sew along emails and worksheets at the link posted in the video description below. In the next video, we are going to go over quilting for the Rock Candy Table Topper. See you soon!